Good morning. My name is H.W. Ted Matthews, Associate Pastor, and I would like to bring greetings to the graduating class of 2022. Congratulations to you who graduated in 2022. The Fellowship of Faith Church family wishes to pay tribute to you on this graduation graduate recognition ceremony. The title of the presentation will be discussed a little later on, but what I want to do is talk to you about how I go about preparing these things from the Pearls of Wisdom series that I often use. As I prepare these presentations, I always ask the Lord, Lord, what would you like for me to tell these graduates that would prepare them to live a victorious Christian life? The question is, what is a victorious Christian life? Simply stated, it is a life that we have that fulfills God's purpose for us. In Ephesians 2.10, the word tells us that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Now, oftentimes we think good works means just works in the church. But all of the works that God has given us to do represent that. And he has preordained us even before we were in our mother's womb. He had already determined what he wanted us to do. And you know, I find that kind of interesting because much of my life was spent doing what I wanted to do, what I thought I needed to do to achieve a certain thing. I never even thought about asking God, God, what would, you, would you like for me to be a doctor? Would you like for me to be a dentist? Would you like for me to be a farmer or what? I've kind of thought that, you know, if I did something and it seemed good to me and it didn't hurt anybody, that God would be okay with that. But that's not the case. We need to consult with God all the time about what would he desire us to do in life. And in that way, we'll get in professions that are fulfilling and that can please God and glorify God. Now, the key to all of this really is to live a life of faith in Jesus Christ. Now, what about this Christian life I'm talking about? Will this life be a life without trials, a life without tribulations, a life like tiptoeing through the tulips, like we often think? Sometimes we say, well, you know, Life is so hard, that's what drove me to Christ. Now it seems like it's harder. Well, sometimes it is. I've said this before. The Christian life is a life of you're either getting prepared to go into a trial, you're in a trial, or you're coming out of a trial. That's what it is. But what do you do when you go through these hardships? Maybe even when the circumstances seem so bad that you don't know what to do. Well, the first thing I want to say that Jesus told his disciples in John 16:33. These things have I spoken unto you, that you might have peace. Now keep this in mind. He is about to go on and be sacrificed. He's going to go and be crucified and go on and be back with the Father. And he's telling them, hey, I won't be with you much longer. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the Comforter to you, the Holy Spirit. Someone to give you the Spirit of Truth to let you know who will comfort you. But after that, you will be scattered abroad. And when you're scattered abroad, you're going to have bad experiences. And what I want to tell you is that in this world, you shall have tribulations. Yes, you will. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. What he's really telling us is that if he's overcome the world, then he's given us the victory to overcome the world. And we have to keep that in mind. Well, that's okay. That's good. But what, what do we do? How, how does that work? When you fall into these different, diverse kind of temptations and difficult times, Circumstances feel so bad, you don't even know how you're going to get through them or whether you even be able to get through them. It seems impossible. Well, let's look at a story in 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, 1 through 6, which is a great example of how to respond to discouragement and hard times. I've looked at this chapter many times in my life through many hard times that I've had, and it has blessed me in many, many points. And I've named these slides that describe this as situations that lead David to encourage himself in the Lord. If you recall, David was a, a boy probably about 15 years old when God told Samuel to go to the house of Jesse. And when he went there, there would be a son there of Jesse who would be anointed as a future king because Saul had already blown it. When Jesse went there, and ultimately he chose David, and he anointed David. But David, wasn't shows, David didn't take on that kingdom until 15 years later. If you recall, David then went 
and Saul, Saul to say, Saul, I can kill this uncircumcised Philistine. He was talking about Goliath. And Saul said, you're just a boy. You can't kill anybody. And David said, look, I was watching the sheep. And a, a bear came, and I killed the bear. And then a lion came, and I came and killed the lion. And just as God was with me then, God will be for me now. And I'll kill this uncircumcised Philistine. So that goes to show you that we were talking about somebody who already had faith and who was trusting in the faithfulness of God and what he'd already done. And that's one way that you can encourage yourself is look at the blessings of how God has brought you through so many trials. But I want to talk about some other things. The other thing I want to mention to you, 15 years after he was anointed, what happened? He got in trouble with Saul. And Saul became angry with him. And he had to leave. He and his army, his men, about four or 500, fled Israel because Saul was going to kill him, because Saul got jealous of him, because all the people were saying, hey, Saul killed a 1,000, David killed 10,000, and Saul couldn't handle that. Fifteen years later, after patiently waiting on the Lord, after killing Goliath, he's made king. That's something for us to understand, that God promises don't always come to us right when we want them. They come when he wants to give them to us and when we need them. Now, what happened after this is David was so tired of fleeing, Goliath, of, uh, fleeing uh, Saul, David was so tired of fleeing King Saul, that he ran, and guess what he did? He joined forces with the Philistines. Isn't that interesting? He fights the Philistine, Goliath, so that he can save Israel. Now he joins the Philistines to save himself from being killed by Saul. But there's one big problem with that. They never trusted him. They didn't know whether he would turn on them. So when the Philistines were getting ready to go fight uh, Saul, David was ready to go with them. But the Philistines wouldn't let him go. And they said, no, you can't go. Go back to your land. And he, they had given him a piece of land called Ziklag. Z-I-K, Z, excuse me, Z-I-K-L-A-G. And so when David went back, as he was going back, he noticed that everybody in, this, in that place in Ziklag were grieving. They were weeping. Why? Because the Amalekites had gone there and raided Ziklag and burned the city and taken all the women and all of the children. And so can you imagine that David think he's coming home and his men coming home to wives and children and family and everything has been burned and taken. So when he arrived, everyone was grieved and the situation was terrible and they wept. But guess what happened? They blamed David and they were going to stone David. So now you have this picture how David was such an outcast. His brothers denounced him. Saul denounced him. The Philistine denounced him. And now the people who he was living with denounced him and wanted to kill him. But David, they said that David handled this tragedy by doing what? Encouraging himself. And that term encouraging means strengthening. By strengthening himself in the Lord. In general, reminding him that he needed God. And brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you that's one of the greatest testimony there is in the Bible. That when things get so rough, you don't know what to do, you run out of yourself, you forget what you need to do, encourage yourself, build yourself up in the Lord, strengthen yourself so that you can go forth. And now what we're going to do is spend some time in determining how we're going to do this. Now there are several ways you can do it. One is through prayer, praise, attending church, but I want to talk to you about a way that I often use in a way that's easy to use, in a way that can come back to you real quickly. And that's by reading or reciting scriptures that encourage you as a means of being encouraged. Now, we chose scriptures, we choose scriptures based on our knowledge and living Bible principles. So the scriptures that I'm going to give you are scriptures that I do use. You need to find your own. But in order to do that, you need to know more about the Bible. You need to know about God. And you need to know from that Biblical principles. And from these biblical principles, you will be able to pick good scriptures. Principle number one, obey God and leave all the consequences to him. Obey God and leave all the consequences to him. God alone knows the future. And he calls us to trust in him and to walk by faith, not by sight. See, one of the problems we have is that we don't mind obeying God when we think he's going to do things the way we want him to do it. And when he's going to do how he want, we, we want him to do it. But it's not always like that. Once we do what we tell him to do, we've given it over to him. 
We don't have anything else to do with him. It's his job. He is responsible for the outcome and to use it for his purpose and glory. Now let me mention something to you about this. Sometimes God will handle it in a way that the situation is worse. And that happens. But sometimes that has happened so that we can come to our knees and trust in God and rely upon him. But regardless of what the situation is, obey God and leave the consequences to him. That's principle number one. Principle number two, God is in absolute control of every circumstance in our life. God is in absolute control of every circumstance in our life. Romans 8, 28 tells us this. And we know, not didn't know, or thought we might know, and we know now that all things work together for the good. To those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. God is a master engineer. He works things out for our good and his glory, regardless of how the situation is. And you've got to believe that. You've got to understand that nothing can happen to you unless God allows it. And if he allows it, he can use it, and it's for his purpose. That's my favorite scripture, because sometimes I'm just beat down and having troubles, and then I have to realize, hey, God knows what's going on with me. If this is going on, he's allowed it. If he allows it, I need it. I may not want it, but I need it. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I still need it. And I know at the end, it's going to be for my good, and it's going to be for his glory. Now, the Lord takes the bad situations in our lives, in everything, and he knows what to do with them. He uses them to perfect us, to make us, to make us more to mature in Christ. He uses it to confirm. He uses it to strengthen. And he uses it to establish us. All of those are the basic four things that God uses to, to deal with us as he needs to deal with us. Principle number three. Trust the Lord for every need in your life. You know that scripture, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. If you're going to lead contented lives, and that's what we want. You know, he said, my peace I leave with you, not the peace of the world. You're not going to have the peace of the world. That's fleeing. But God's peace is regardless of the circumstances. He said, you need to know that God is trustworthy. How do you think you could trust some, let somebody lead you with, with your needs if you don't believe they're trustworthy? But he is trustworthy. And that trustworthiness will allow you to be peaceful in all situations, to trust in him. If he makes a promise, he will keep it. Maybe not like you think. Maybe not like when you think he will do it. Or not how, but God is faithful that promises each and every time he will come through. Now, what I want to do now, brothers and sisters, is share with you some scriptures that I use. Not all of them, just some. And you might use some of these too. And don't worry about how they're written. I'm not using necessarily Elizabethan language like thou and thee and all of that. Because I don't use that when I pray. Like come to thee. I say, come to me, Lord. Help me, not thee. And that's how I'm going to do it. The first one I'm going to talk about very quickly, and that is to establish who I am in God's kingdom. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. That's one of my favorites. So Satan knows right off the bat that I know that what God has in me is greater than what he has in the world. And that's the Holy Spirit. The next one is in the same vein. No weapon, none, that forms against me shall prosper and win. Satan, you can bring it on. But you will never prosper and you may not, you'll never win. I might fall down. I might look like I'm about to go. But nothing will come against me that I can't handle because the Lord Jesus Christ is with me. The third one, God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help, and I like to put in this, in times of trouble. Anytime I'm in trouble, I always say, Lord, you're my refuge. You're my strength. You're my buckler. You're my shield. A present help in times of trouble. Amen and amen. Some other scriptures I like to have. By his stripes I'm healed. Sometimes I'm feeling so bad. I say, Lord, your word tells me in Isaiah 53, 37, that by your stripes I'm healed. If I was healed over 2,000 years ago, I'm healed today. And I claim it in the name of Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus over my body. And Lord, I thank you for new mercies every day. Hallelujah. The next one. In this world, we talked about this. I'll have tribulations. But Lord, that doesn't matter. Because I'm going to be of good cheer. Because you've overcome the world. If you've overcome the world, I'm going to overcome the world. The next one, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. 
but in all your ways trust in him, and he will direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Here's some more, some of my real favorite ones. This helps me understand that God is with me regardless of the situation. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Lord, Satan, you might as well get thee behind me in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus told me he would never leave me nor forsake me. Then there's another favorite of mine in Jeremiah. A lot of people don't use this. It's 119. They shall fight against thee. They shall fight against me. But they shall not prevail against me. Because Jesus is with me and will never leave me. All people will come against you. Anybody. But they won't prevail. So it doesn't matter. A third one. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. That's in uh, Romans 8.39. If you know that, then you can count on God. You can depend on God always. And whatever comes against you, you say, hey, I don't care. Persecution, trials, tribulation. God is right there. And another one that I just added before I started today. I recall I talked to a lady one time. She was getting ready to go in the hospital to have an operation. I said, how do you feel? She said, and I used this ever since. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I've said that sometimes. When I thought things had been so bad, I said, Satan, bring it on. But you're wasting your time. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And the last one that I want to talk about is we can't always talk about what we want to do to be encouraged ourselves. We've got to give God the glory for it. And sometimes we need to do a praise song. And one is in 1 Samuel 2, 2, which says, who is like the Lord? There's no one. Who is like the Lord? He is strong and mighty. Who is like the Lord? He is worthy. Stand up and give him the praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. And boy, that just gets me so fired up that I just could feel like I could go fight another Goliath. Class of 2022, this is my closing words to you. Stay strong. Stay strong. Keep looking up. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Always knowing. That circumstances don't have the last word. God does. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God.